What's up guys? So I haven't made a gun video in a really long time, so I figured now is a great time to talk about my new toy. I picked up a Taurus TX-22. It's a 22 long rifle semi-automatic pistol uh, with optics cut and a threaded barrel. So it's inside this uh, little chest rig man bag I have here. I'll show you it in a second, but I wanted to uh, talk about why I chose this, this pistol. Um, I wanted a, a 22 pistol to suppress and um, I've had um, the old Ruger uh, Mark IIs and Mark III's. I've had a couple of those in the past, but they're all steel, kind of heavy, not very modern. Uh, magazines are weird, uh, usually not optics cut. And I just wanted something more modern. I wouldn't mind having another one, but right now I wanted something compact and modern, something polymer, lightweight, threaded barrel, optics cut. Looked around at the SIGs, looked around at the Glocks, looked around at the MMPs. Um, there's a couple other ones out there too. I think, I don't know who it was, like Caltech and some other ones. Um, but I narrowed it down to the Taurus TX-22 Compact, which is inside here. Uh, this is a 511 two banger chest rig slash man bag. You can carry it like a man bag. And if you're riding a bike or whatever, dirt bike, whatever, or if you're just walking around, you need a bag. Or if you want to make it into a chest rig, it kind of orients itself in the front like a chest rig, which is kind of nice. You can put two AR-15 mags in here in the back if you wanted to. It's got a main pouch for a pistol and then a small pouch for keys, cell phone, uh, medical supplies, stuff like that. Tourniquet, whatever. It's got some molly on here. But oftentimes you'll see me with this um, if I'm out and about riding the side-by-side. -side. You'll probably see me with this because it, it actually sits right in the front so I can still have access to it while I'm out driving around. So I love this setup and I wanted this. So when we're out up in the mountains, I could just pull over to the side, pull out the 22 and plink. So that's the reason why I chose the uh, Taurus TX-22 Compact. So let me show you what it looks like. So it's all in here. I got, the, I got the pistol. I got the suppressor, um, two magazines, maybe 400 rounds of ammo, but um, got a little pocket holster to protect the trigger. If you ever carry off body, I highly recommend that you have something to protect your trigger. Don't just put it in the bag like this because your trigger can get hit. Um, especially if you have a round in the chamber. I don't have a round in the chamber because this is not a defensive gun. It's just a plinking gun. Mag out. Chamber's empty. Let's talk about this cool little pistol because I'm really excited about this thing. It's really cool. All right, so this is the Taurus TX-22 Compact. They do make a full-size version of this now with a threaded barrel that doesn't take an adapter. It's just a threaded barrel and a little bit longer. I think it's uh, four inches. This is a three and a half inch barrel. Um, I didn't get that one because I wanted the compact size of this one. As you can see, it's uh, about the size of maybe a Glock 19, a little bit bigger than a Glock 26 in comparison but it's got the smaller grip which is what i wanted and the smaller barrel it's pretty nice of course another big selling point to this gun too was its fit and finish its quality i mean it is very well made this is just as nice as a glock or a sig um, or a smith and wesson mp in my opinion if not better in many ways but again, a big selling point to this model specifically was the compact has pre-cut slide for optics. It comes with um, a pre-cut for the shield RMSC, which means that it'll take other optics that are cut for that as well. So this is a SIG uh, Romeo Zero, which is an all polymer red dot. Kind of budget friendly, to be quite honest. I think it's only 175 bucks. I got it at um, Shields here in Reno. That's not bad for a 22 op optic. Uh, you could also go with a Hollow Sun, but those are a little bit more expensive. Uh, the SIG optics are really nice. Uh, it is all polymer, so it's plastic, it's lightweight. And don't kid yourself, even though it says SIG right there, I believe these are still made in China, which is probably why it only costs 175 bucks. But it is a SIG branded product and it does work well for what I'm using it for, which is a 22. So that was a big selling point right there. 
is the optics cut. Another big selling point for me was the threaded barrel. So it uh, doesn't come with a thread protector. I bought this separate, but uh, the barrel is pre-cut for a thread adapter. This is half by 28. And you just screw it on. Uh, it stays on with some uh, thread, thread locker, some Loctite. And uh, I just leave it on there. I don't take it off. And then I put the thread protector on there just to protect it. And it works just fine. So now I can run a suppressor on here. So that was another big selling point. Uh, the barrel is three and a half inches and it's a fixed barrel fixed to the frame so it doesn't tilt. So it should be fairly accurate from what everyone says. I haven't really tested it for accuracy. I've took it, taken it out shooting quite a bit, but I haven't tested it for accuracy as far as, you know, doing bench testing or anything like that. It hits the targets at 25 yards. I'm happy. <laughs> Hitting cans at 25, that's what I want, right? And that's stretching it, you know. 25 yards, that's a long distance for a little three and a half inch 22. Uh, let's, let's point out all the features. Uh, polymer frame, which is really nice. Very reminiscent of a like an HK or a Walther style, in my opinion. That's what it feels like. The texture is really nice. It, again, this reminds me of like an HK kind of kind of a DNA, which is a good thing. Those are good guns. It's got a little bit of a finger groove right here for one finger. And as you can see right there, there's a little finger groove, a little bit of undercut on the trigger. So you can get nice and high. And then there's a little lip right there for the bottom. Your pinky still hangs off the edge. I guess once you have the, the mag in there, it kind of has a place. If you have bigger hands than mine, it probably will still hang off like that. I have medium sized hands and they're kind of chunky, but it works. In the back, it's got a palm swell in the back. It's not changeable. It is what it is, but it's a good fit. Feels good. Magazine release. It's in a good spot. You kind of have to break your grip a little bit. You could probably drop this without, let's see, without breaking the grip. Here's a full grip. Oh yeah, I can't hit it with a full grip. I have to break my grip a little bit to get it. So if you wanted to extend this, I'm sure there's a company that makes an extension. Leave a comment below if you know who makes extensions for this. I don't know. Uh, I believe you could swap this out to the other side. It's not ambidextrous per se, as in full-time ambidextrous, which I don't agree with. But you can swap it if you are a lefty and you want left-handed mag release. It's a striker fire, just like a Glock. But it doesn't have the dongle little swivel like a Glock does. It's just a traditional trigger. Trigger, trigger is relatively nice. Let's see here. So take up, nice crisp break. It's not horrible. Reset. Reset's a little spongy, but it, you can hear it. And you can feel it and then break. So pretty good. It's actually not bad at all for a 22. I don't recommend dry firing your 22, but just for the video, it's not gonna hurt it once or twice. Trigger guards. Uh, square cut square square shape anyway flat in the front so good for support hand if you're one of those guys, kind of guys that likes to use your support hand like that i don't do that but you could um, also makes for good for uh, it's good for when you mount a light on here so it's kind of clean it's got a little nub there too it does have these little indentations right there those are almost like index points for your finger so your index finger can sit in that little that little slot. So maybe under low light where you can't really see your gun, you can kind of feel where your finger is. So you know you're indexed. Some people index like this, that's not right. You should be indexing outside the trigger guard. And then your support hand can, can sit right there. See that little ledge, almost like a gas pedal. That's really nice, I like that. Very nice. Dust cover has a Picatinny rail for lights and lasers. Just a one slot kind of deal there. Your serial number's under there. Everything lines up nicely. Very nice. 
In the back, you do have a little bit of a beaver tail so you don't get slide bite. Very nice. As you can see here, that is your safety. So swipe up for safety on, swipe down for safety off, just like a 1911. Now, I really like safeties, especially on off-body carry. If you're going to carry a gun in a bag or off-body, I think it's a good idea to have a safety lever just for personal preference, especially if there's a round in the chamber, which I'm not going to do with this gun. It's not a defensive gun. But if this were a 9mm or some kind of defensive gun, off-body carry, uh, safety is actually really nice. So you, you don't have to worry about accidentally, for whatever reason, Murphy's Law goes off, right? You have a safety. I like that. And it's ambidextrous, so lefties and righties. Feels good. Positive click. It's nice. I grew up with 1911s, so very comfortable with safeties. That's all that it's what it really boils down to is training. If you train for a safety, then it's not a big deal. If you don't train with safeties, well, then that might be a problem. And it is, like I said, ambidextrous. Uh, slide release or slide lock, depending on what you want to call it, it's right there. It's only on one side, so righty. Ooh, I know people are probably like, oh, don't do that, don't do that. I just did it for the video, it's not going to break the gun. Uh, I don't do it all the time, but I just wanted to show you that you could, right? Leave a comment below if you think that's good or bad. All right, moving on to the slide. Aluminum slide, it's anodized black, really nice looking. It's got serrations in the front for press checking. You still need to check sometimes, see if there's a round in the chamber. You can do that, you can do it this way. You can rack it from the front or you can use the serrations on the back, rack it from the back. Very nice. You have a lightning cut on the top, lightning cut cuts on both sides. That's just to lighten up the slide so the little 22 can cycle with an optic. Because if it had more mass here, it'd be a little bit harder for that recoil to push the slide back. So very, very lightweight, super lightweight aluminum slide. Like I said, your barrel is three and a half inches and it's fixed to the to the frame so it doesn't tilt. As you can see, no tilt. It says 22 long rifle right there. Very cool. There's a look at that thread adapter that I Loctite it on there. And I believe, let's see, I believe the guide rod, I believe that's plastic. And then the inner part is metal, I think. Leave a comment below if you know for sure. But yeah, that does feel like plastic right there. And then that piece right there is metal. So it's like metal and plastic. It's a 22, so I'm not worried about it. So the sights look like they're Glock style. So in the front, there's like a screw underneath the slide. There's a screw, not a dovetail. And in the back, there's a dovetail. And it's just a black notch with a white dot in the front. They're not optics height. So you won't be able to co-witness with a red dot on. But the nice thing is, is this specific model when you put a red dot on here, you don't need an adapter plate for the optic if you go with an RMSC. So there's no plate that comes off. A lot of times you'll see these guns, like the SIG, for example, it's probably a, arguably maybe a better gun than this. I don't think it is, but some people say it is. But with the SIG, you lose the entire rear end, including your rear sight. It just all comes off, and then you put your red dot there. Now you have no, no rear sight. Do you need it? No, probably not. But I, I just like this design better. Red dot goes here, you keep your, your sights, and if you want to get uh, suppressor height sights, you can, and then you can co-witness through your red dot. So, big selling point to me, this, this optic style. All right, let's talk about the magazines. So it comes with two magazines. They're both plastic mags with plastic base pads. This one holds 13 rounds. Just enough to get the job done. I like the fact that they're 13 rounds and not 10, 
like the Rugers. That's nice. 13 rounds is, is good. More, the better. <laughs> so in the uh, 511 two banger, I have a little bag in here. And this, this little bag actually holds the second magazine. 13 rounds, which is nice. I wish they would give you three mags, but beggars can't be choosers, right? And then I have a bunch of boxes with some loose ammo in here as well. But uh, yeah, you got 50, so I have 200. So there you go, I got just over 200 rounds of ammo inside this bag. And all of this fits inside here like that pretty nice so that's the reason why I went with this if I would have went with the uh, full size it'd be a little bit harder to hide in here you could do it but I just I didn't want to because the longer barrel with the optics it would just be a little bit tighter this compact fits in here perfect and I, again this is just for plinking it's not competition it's not survival it's not self-defense although you could use it for all of those things it's not really meant for that I think the competition model, the Gen 1 competition model, had like a fixed optic that doesn't move. And then the slide moved underneath it, which is fine, but I didn't like the way it looked. All right, so here's the best part about all of this. So in this bag, I carry the gun, two mags, 200 rounds of ammo, and my suppressor. So this is a Banish 45. This is a 45 can from Silencer Central. And uh, it can shoot 45 all the way down to 22 with this thing. It has an extension. I think it's like a three inch extension if you really want to get super quiet, but I'm shooting 22. So I took it off. Uh, this is a little bit too big and bulky for a 22, but it's what I got. I'm going to buy a dedicated 22 can, which will be skinnier, lighter, and shorter than this but i just haven't gotten around to buying one yet so this will do for now so let's put it on here and show you what it looks like bam so there you go uh the banish 45 um i can do a whole video on this i guess but this is a good can because it can shoot 45 all the way down to 22 and everything in between i um i shortened it like i said um i took the uh nielsen device out of out there's like a nielsen device um, adapter that locks everything up so it doesn't have a spring action like you normally need for shooting center fire this one is fixed so you can shoot it on 22s like this or uh, pccs uh, pistol caliber carbines that don't need tilting mechanisms or the nielsen device so there you go half by 28 adapter and that's my silenced 22. Pretty nice, huh? Kiki, be quiet. I'm trying to make a video over here. But yeah, there you go. That's my silenced 22. Let's put a mag in there. The suppressor's kind of big, but you know what? I don't care. It'll help quiet down that 22. Make it movie silent, Hollywood quiet. Oh, that's pretty nice, huh? <laughs> I'll show you this gun again when I get the 22 suppressor, but that's that's my setup for plinking out in the mountains here in Nevada. All right, and lastly, I want to show you guys the light and laser option I have for this. Uh, this is purely for fun. You don't need it, but it's just fun. This is an Olight uh, Balder Mini, super compact, and it has a laser built in. See that little black dot above the uh, LED? That's a laser. So you'll click it on here like this, like that. And it actually slides, as you can see. It slides into any position you want. You push it all the way back and then just lock it into place like that. No tools needed. And this is really cool. Check this out. So uh, if you want just the light, you tap it down and you have a light. Tap it again, turns it off. If you want momentary, You'll hold it down like that. Just hold it down, let go, and it turns off. Again, you'll activate this with your support hand. Don't use your trigger finger, that's improper. 
hold it down, the light turns on, let go, the light turns off. You want it on all the time, just tap it once and it'll stay on and you're good to go. You want to turn it off, tap it, and it turns off. Pretty cool, right? Well, here's the cool part. Here comes the laser. Do you want just the laser? Again, tap it down just for constant on. You can see, I don't know if you guys can see that. See that green laser? It's coming out of the bezel. You got a green laser. <laughs> that is awesome. Look at that. Got a nice little laser suppressor and red dot. This thing is assassin ready. And here's the even cooler part. You want light and laser? Go to the middle position right here. See that selector? You go to the middle position, tap down, and you have light and laser. It's not going to show up on camera, but there's a green light and there's a green laser and a light. That's cool. Tap it to turn it off. Put it back on laser just because it's cool. <laughs> Love it. So there you go, guys. That's a look at my Taurus TX22 Compact with the optics cut, threaded barrel. I got a suppressor and a light and laser. If you're wondering how much this gun costs, um, I got it on sale for $250, but I think retail is like $299. So if you uh, shop around, you might be able to find this for $250 up to $300. Bucks. And then, of course, this is probably $100. This is about $175. And this is about $1,000. This is a $1,000 suppressor on a $250 22. Crazy, right? All right, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit that like button to support my channel. I appreciate it. It helps me out a lot. Ring the bell to be notified when I upload new videos and leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about the Taurus TX22. Do you like the SIG better? Do you like the Smith & Wesson better? Do you like the Ruger better? Do you like the kel better? <laughs> what do you think? Thanks a lot, guys. Take care.